when, when you said you have guns. No, at the debate. At the I'm, debate I'm when a you gun owner. Tim Walls is a gun. I did not know that. <laughs> if and somebody I thought that breaks was in my house, they're getting shot. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, yes. I, I, I hear that. I hear that. I probably should not have said that. <laughs> <laughs> but when. Oh, my God. Let me just say if Democrats can, like, take back gun issues, it's fing so over. Holy shit, it's so fing over. Not good. Republicans need to get their shit together. All right, this thing, old school carburetor. Uh, you can always tell something about somebody's maintenance when how clean their air filter is. Uh, look, to be able to work on this thing, you got a manual. Oh, no. I'm starting to worry, to guys. On- I'm starting to worry, okay? <sighs> this guy is too much. This guy's a f-ing serial killer, okay? This is the Trinity killer. I don't know if I'm believing this. I'm starting to get worried. It's too much. He's, he's too cool. Something is going on here, okay? He's got kids under the floorboards or something, all right? Something horrible is happening here. When how clean their air filter is. Uh, look, to be able to work on this thing, you got a manual. It shows you exactly what to do to fix things on this. Donald Trump and J.D. Vance have a manual, too. It's called Project 2025, and it's a way to stick it to the middle class by giving tax cuts to the wealthiest. Look, you didn't, they didn't give me a manual for this if you didn't plan on using it to fix your truck. They didn't create that Project 2025 just to have it set around as a door. Wow, Harjot, thanks for the five subs, buddy. Stop. We know who these guys are. We know they got a playbook to rig the economy. Let's make sure it doesn't. And uh, you can always tell, again, somebody, if they keep a clean air filter, they do good maintenance. Fuck air filters, all right? And look, so yeah, do I agree with what Laura Loomer said about Kamala Harris? No, I don't. I also don't think that this is actually an issue of national import. Is Laura Loomer running for president? No. Kamala Harris is running for president. And whether you're eating curry at your, chick- at your dinner table or fried chicken, things have gotten more expensive thanks to her policies. Let's talk about the person running for president of the United States, not a social media personality who supports Donald Trump. Senator- and look, so yeah, do I agree with what Laura Loomer said about Kamala Harris? <laughs> Are they eating curry or, you know, watermelon and fried chicken or... uh I mean, KFC, uh, I mean, collard greens. I mean, uh, <laughs> every day is a struggle, not to say it. Sure, I forget exactly which official it was within the European Union, but sent Elon this threatening letter that basically said, we're going to arrest you if you platform Donald Trump, who, by the way, is the likely next president of the United States. So what America should be saying is, oh, if NATO wants us to continue supporting them and NATO wants us to continue to be a good participant in this military alliance, why don't you respect American values and respect free speech? Excuse me, it's insane. What? You don't have to have our laws or our constitution that we would support a military alliance if that military alliance isn't gonna be pro-free speech. I think we can do both. What? But we've gotta say, American power comes with certain strings attached. One of those is respect free speech, especially in our European allies. Like, look, I'm not gonna go to some backwoods country and tell them how to live their lives, but European countries should think- Why would you, backward, why would you even say this? Theoretically share American values, especially about some very basic things like free speech. The leader. I- okay. I think that w- the thing that we have to take away from the last 10 years is that we really need to be really ruthless when it comes to the exercise of power. Um, I was talking about this with, with someone earlier today, where you remember there was some threat that congressional or Senate Republicans made. If you get rid of the filibuster, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. And you actually look at it, it's like, Oh, this, is, this is not that interesting. Like, like, we're going to actually like, live yeah, on a promise yeah, that we've made like, for like, decades. Right, right, like, <laughs> you know, this, the, the, you know you, this, is, this is the threat. You get rid of the filibuster, we're going to do this stuff. Like, they're talking about expanding the Supreme Court. They're talking yeah. about adding, you know, two senators from heavily Democratic places. You get rid of the um, filibuster, we'll actually deliver on yeah, you. Yeah, like, like, did you know? They're talking about adding senators from heavily. Is he talking about D.C. and Puerto Rico? It's, it should always clue you in when Republicans are so scared of expanding the right to vote to other people that should always clue you in for what's going on in their minds oh we don't want to do yeah um so i i think i mean look i am a cynic about this and, and maybe even a little bit of a pessimist but i think the challenge confronting american conservatives is that we have lost every major powerful institution in the country except for or maybe churches and religious institutions which of course are weaker now than they've ever been uh, we've lost big business we've lost finance we've- you haven't 
you you well you've lost them but that's because you turned your back on all of these things like even the idea i i might have even said this kind of retardedly but it's not really true like conservatives are trying to conserve the past and liberals are trying to move to the future like that's not really true that's a pretty simplistic outlook on how things are supposed to work but if you're but if you're literally trying to do that if you're literally just trying to hold on to the past and you don't ever want to move into the future, yeah, of course, you're going to lose everything. You guys have just become like a hate-filled group of disgusting, narcissistic, like evil, negative people. So yeah, of course, you've lost everything, all the institutions and all the big business. Because you hate, you hate big business. You hate corporations. You hate trade. You hate globalism. You hate other countries. You hate the, you hate the police. <laughs> like you're conservatives and you hate like all the, yeah, it's crazy. Guys, oh my God. You want to know what I've read? I'm not going to ever read the full report. I, I don't know, bro. I'm having so many thoughts. I'm having so many second thoughts about this country. Bro, the Bill Clinton sh** was unreal. <laughs> that is an unbelievable. What the f***? The Ken Starr shit? That that came off of a special counsel that spent four years invest. Bro, that entire story is actually unbelievable. What the f***? Does anybody know where the Monica Lewinsky investigate? Like, how any of that even happened? I will admit, okay, I spent less than an hour reading about this. I was like, no shot. Because I, now I kind of want to read the whole Ken Starr report. It seemed like there was, um, I don't remember the origination of this. Um, Ken Starr was the special counsel, right? Wait, Kenneth Starr. I don't know if he was, no, no. I don't believe he was the special counsel. He was the independent counsel. It was different because they wanted somebody independent even from the, um, like even more independent than a special counsel. There was an accusation of Bill Clinton in a civil case having to do, I think, with sexual assault. And Republicans were so obsessed. You want to talk about a fishing expedition. They hired this Ken Starr guy to make sure that Bill Clinton was being honest in a sexual harassment or whatever civil suit, okay, that didn't involve Monica Lewinsky at all. And this guy dug for like four years to finally find something. And then from all of that, the, uh, the Monica Lewinsky stuff eventually gets uncovered and then all of it gets published by this guy. But this... The entire investigation behind this was so wild. Like, what the f***? This was the craziest fishing expedition I've ever heard of in my entire life. Holy s***. Kavanaugh was on the star team, by the way. Brett based. But anyways, not that, not that it matters. I've looked, like, briefly into the, um... I didn't realize how f this was, too. What? I don't want to look into these because just, it's going to make me mad and I have other shit that I need to read. Um, and it makes you sound like a partisan hack to say this. But I really, right now I'm in the 55% camp that the 2000 election was just flat out f***ing stolen from Gore. <laughs> what the f***? Um, is there, are legal scholars like divided or is there a good defense for that Supreme Court case? Alan Lickman says he has the leading paper for how it was stolen. We, how many different recounts was uh, Donald Trump able to perform for his fucking bullshit ass? Wait, hold on. Oh, my God. And now that I understand the civics better, like, now I see how it's even, like, more insane. It's even more ridiculous. I would have to go back and revisit this because I, I remember reading a little bit about this case, like, two months ago. Somebody emailed me about it. I was like, well, okay, was it actually fucked? This decision was made on December 12th. So the, the Electoral College vote certification, like where they open the votes and they read them, wouldn't have even been until a month later. What the f***? Why? What was the rationale given? I haven't read the actual decision. I don't want to read the decision. The court ruled on equal protection grounds that the recount be stopped. The states have to certify by the 15th. So the f what? Hold on, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. <clears throat> Haven't we heard over and 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 over again that if you want to send in two sets of electoral votes to wait for a recount to finish, that you have the right to do that? Isn't that exactly the actual argument that's brought up 
when conservatives talk over and over and over and over again about the 1962 slates of votes that were sent in from Hawaii, the state legislature just authorized both to go in pending the outcome of the recount. Isn't that exactly what Trump's campaign told every single fake elector that they got to fraudulently attest to being real electors without the approval of the state legislatures that, oh, we'll just keep these as backup in case we win our voter fraud cases? Like, my understanding is Gore got a few recounts, but then was denied the last one of the grounds that he only requested four recounts. They would likely win and not the entire state, so it was unfair. Oh, sh is that true? Did he only want to recount in one area? I don't want to get into this. We don't have time. You know what? We'll add that, though. We're going to add that to the, to the roster of things.